to the book of Acts, Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4 and then we will be reading from verses 13 through 21. Acts chapter 4 verses 13 through 21. And it's, it reads as follows. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated common men, they were astonished and they recognized that they had been with Jesus. But seeing the man who was healed standing beside them, they had nothing to say in opposition. But when they had commanded them to leave the council, they conferred with one another saying, What shall we do to these men? For that a notable sign has been performed through them is evident to all inhabitants of Jerusalem. And we cannot deny it. Verse 17, but in order that it may spread no further among the people, let us warn them to speak no more to anyone in this name. So they called them and charged them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered them, whether it is right in your sight or in the sight of God, to listen to you rather than to God, you must judge. For we cannot but speak what we have seen and heard. 
And when they had further threatened them, they let them go, finding no way to punish them because of the people. For all were praising God for what had happened. Hallelujah. Amen. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord, for the privilege that we have, that we can once again share your word, Lord. Lord, we need you. We need your Holy Spirit to come and empower us, Lord, in this day. We know and we understand, Father, that it is not by our skills. It is not by looking smart and standing here, Lord, and, and, and putting your word forward to the people. But, Lord, we know that it is only by the power of your Spirit that lives can be changed. That this word can have impact. Only by the power of the Holy Spirit. And we pray, Lord, that you touch, Lord. There are needs here today. There are people, Father God, who need direction. And we trust, Lord, that the Holy Spirit will give them direction, Lord, and give them physical relief for their body, mental uh, and, and emotional relief for their bodies, Lord. In Jesus' name, we thank you. Amen. Amen. Well, we have come this far in helping you in this series to develop a warfare language. A language that brings the realization that life is not a bed of roses. Life is not a dreamland. Life is not a holiday resort. But that life is a battleground. Life is a valley of Bacha. And life is a war zone. The warfare language is a language of maturity and responsibility. In 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 11, Paul says, When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I gave up childish things. So the Christian community should understand this better. Adam's defeat took humanity out of the garden into a battlefield. Our freedom, Basalwani, was bought through the blood of the Lamb. It is protected through the blood of the Lamb. You must stay under the blood to protect your freedom in Christ. And it is progressed by the word of our testimony, wearing the armor of God and carrying the weapons of our warfare and by laying down our lives. So as a Christian, you must be a man and a woman who knows that the days of being babysitted, the days of uh, talking and crying like a baby are over. The church is moving in a season where it will be saved by its maturity and manhood in Christ. Now, the baton of the gospel that we preach today has reached us through blood, sweat, persecution, death, battles, and wars. We have it today because those who carried it from the generations and into these generations understood the warfare language. Wow. Oh, they, they understood, Bishop. Mm, and mm. also what I understand is that uh, sin deformed the hearts of men. But it is the word of God that transforms. Amen. So today we want you to take you, we want to take you to where the battleground of the church began. Okay? After the Holy Spirit came upon the church, they preached powerfully and souls were added and multiplied into, were multiplied into the kingdom of God. And the church was flying. The first miracle brought persecution. Mm, mm. And I'm going to repeat that. The first miracle brought persecution. After the miracle of the healing of a lame man, they were arrested for preaching Jesus and the resurrection of the dead. Hmm. The high priest could not deny the miracle, but were hell-bent to stop the church in its tracks. They were all out to do whatever they could to stop the gospel from being spread. Now in Acts 4, we see 16 saying, what shall we do with these men? They asked. 
for that a noble sign has been performed through them as evident to all inhabitants in Jerusalem. Mm, mm, mm. And we cannot deny it. Wow. You see how powerful those words are. They could not deny it. But 17, but in order that it may spread no further among the people, listen to what they say. Sure. Let us warn them not uh, let us warn them to speak no more mm. to anyone in this name sure. and then verse 18 so they called them and charged them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus their goal was very clear they made it very very clear don't teach mm. don't preach wow. in the name of Jesus you see, one thing that we should never forget is that for 4,000 years since Adam, Satan has been fighting the promise of the seed of the woman that will bruise his head. And the nation of Israel has been the carrier of that promise. And he has failed to stop Israel from being Israel. Israel from being the blessed people of God. Now for 2,000 years, he has been trying all he can to stop the church, which is the vehicle that preaches salvation and freedom in the name of Jesus. The very name that has crushed his head. Now he has failed because those who carried the baton from the apostles until today, they were spirit filled and had a warfare language. They had a warfare mentality. He tried to profile them. Aye. He tried to persecute them. He tried to put them in prisons. He tried his propaganda. He tried to raise protest against them. And he tried to use plagues to stop them. Indeed, the aim was and is and shall be to stop the message of Jesus Christ going forward. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's so beautiful, uh, uh, Bishop, what's coming out there, the name. Yes. The name of Jesus is so powerful. That name. And the devil knows that. That name. In that name, we are healed. And in that name, we are saved. Because the Holy Ghost came on Mary when the baby was born. And she was told to name the baby Jesus, mm. which mm. means salvation. For he shall save his people from their sins. Yes, mm. salvation. And the enemy knows that. So he gets nervous when you are going to speak in the name of Jesus. The now they try different threats. Let's go through these threats, Bishop, and all the attempts. Let's go through them. Number one, they put them in prison. In prison. Behind steel bars. X. Four, verse 3 and they arrested them mm. and put them in custody until the next day until the next day and they were children of God they were followers of Jesus but they were arrested for it was already evening this is the first record of prison in the book of Acts thereafter it becomes a common venue for saints sure. listen to what I'm saying it then became a common venue, the prison. For speaking in the name of Jesus. James was put in prison. Peter, we see, was put in prison. Paul had papers. When he wasn't saved, he had papers. He persecuted the Christians and he had document papers to put them there. When he got saved, Paul and Silas also ended up in prison, but Paul was put there several times. And, and most of the epistles we are reading today to strengthen us as Christians were not written from a holiday resort. He wrote them. They are called prison epistles. Sure. Yeah. That's what making it so powerful. But this was a church that we see that understood warfare. They were not cowards. They were ready as seen in scripture. The second thing that he did from except for prison, he profiled them. He profiled them. Acts chapter 4. 
it says verse 13 now when they saw the boldness of peter and john and perceived in other words assessed profiled them that they were uneducated mm. common men they were astonished so they tried to find the source of their boldness they perceived that they were uneducated they were common men they were not rich people they were not the famous people so satan will always use profiling to stop you from being a witness for the lord he'll press the button to say how are you he'll press the button to say what will you tell me you are a commoner you are not somebody who is famous i listen to better people so he profiles us he wants to he'll tell you you are too young or you are too small you, you i mean where do you come from who do you think you are so satan fights by profiling mm. he looks for our weak points to use them and highlight them into discouraging us from preaching the gospel hey bishop and it looks like the devil likes to use his profiling yes because yes, remember yes. if you read in amos yeah. when the priest was speaking when amos came with a message to the, the high priest to make them aware of their idolatry and the priest was saying to Amos, hey, why don't you go back to where you come from? Yeah. Go make your bread somewhere else. You see, he profiled Amos, but then Amos was so beautifully saying to him, no, no, I'm not a prophet. My father wasn't a prophet, but I was walking behind my sheep and God called me. Sure. Sure. God called me. Sure. That was his answer. So God uses whoever he wants to use. Amen, amen, amen. In amen. a time, in a time of in a time of, of, of idolatry, in a time of high levels of sin in a nation, God will use whoever is available and faithful and true in heart to take his message forward. They were persecuted. Persecution became, number three, became more severe as some of them faced death. Mm. Mm. Stephen was stoned. Mm. James was killed by King Herod. Mm. Paul faced, now Paul was saved, and Paul faced death many times. In fact, all the apostles faced death. The other thing that he uses is propaganda. Propaganda is false information made to look true. Mm. Wherever the gospel was preached, the Pharisees will come and stir turmoil. They accused them in different cities wherever they went. Nero also raised wrong information about Christians. He spread bad information against them. Children of God, don't be stopped by false information that flows around. We are the church and we must be unstoppable for Jesus. These days you will hear, church this, church that, church done this, church done that. Don't worry about those things. Stay focused. You are the guy who is carrying the baton to pass it to the next generation in this time. He also used plagues. He also used plagues to stop the church. But the church would always find its way through the plagues because the church has been unstoppable for Jesus. He used protests in different cities in order to attack the Christians. But the Christians would always rise above those things. For the Lord spoke and said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall never be able to prevail against my church. Hallelujah. 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 Now can you see, child of God, the devices of the enemy? He will use his devices in every generation. They didn't have social media then, Bishop. Yeah. But the word went around. Misinformation, disinformation, fake news went around. And it is still what the devil uses. Don't become a garbage bin for the enemy sure, and carry over sure, 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 dirt sure. of the enemy. We are children of God. Mm. We carry forward the good news of Jesus. The Jesus Hallelujah. who accepted is greater than as a, a, a Facebook status. Praise the Don't Lord. be stopped by a Facebook status to stand for God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. So what made them so strong? What made them so strong? We see here in scripture, they recognized, these authorities recognized that they were with Jesus. Powerful. Powerful. They were prepared by the best. Sure. They sat under the feet of Jesus. Mm. They listened to the word day by day. Mm. They heard him speak. They saw his walk. They saw the miracles. 
and they saw God in action. Sure. They were prepared by the best. By the word he taught in John 15 verse 18, the hatred of the world in 18, if the world hates you, know that he has hated me before it hated you. So don't go and sit down in a pretty party and say they don't like me here. They don't like me there in my job. They don't like me there in that home. If they are unsafe, they don't know Jesus, they will hate you because you know Jesus. John 16, 1 to 4, Bible says, I have said all these things to you to keep you from falling away. They will put you out of the synagogues indeed. The hour is coming when whoever kills you will think he is offering service to God. Verse 3, and they will do these things because they have not known the Father nor me. Verse 4, but I have said these things to you, that when the, their hour comes, uh, comes, you may remember that I told them to you. I did not say these things to you from the beginning because I was with you. Mm -hmm. And then uh, just see John 16, 33. I have said these things to you that in me you may have peace. In mm. the world you will have tribulation. Mm. But take heart, I have overcome the world. So Jesus did not, did not sweet talk the disciples. No. He told them about the storms that were coming. Exactly. But he prepared them to endure through the storm. Yes. They were not like the church of today that is caught and prepared in the midst of these things that are happening today. They were ready. That's right. They were ready. That's right. And it's so beautiful when you read these scriptures to see how Jesus, the, the God in person, came to prepare them mm. and showed them the, 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 the heart of the Father. Jesus prepared them even prophetically mm. that they will receive power from the Holy Spirit, that the Holy Spirit, when the Holy Spirit come upon them, that there were rewards beyond the journey of this life. Sure. That they must look beyond that there will be rewards. Now we only see a little bit, but then we, we, we shall see so much more. He even prepared them through prayer. That's right. These were prayerful people. These yeah. were people who said one time to the Lord, teach us how to pray. And that's why we see right at the beginning of the book of Acts, this church was in the upper room. It was praying. When the Holy Spirit Hallelujah. came upon them, the Bible says they were of one mind and of wow. one accord. So the storms that the devil was bringing their way, they were a prepared church. Wow, 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 wow. And therefore, now you can see why they had a language of warfare. So they stood right in the face of danger and they replied not as an intimidated bunch of people. When they were facing the Pharisees, they did not sweep the ground with their eyelashes. They stood bold and looked at the high priest straight in the face, eyeball to eyeball. Hey, it's time to eyeball the devil and tell him where to get off. Amen. Amen. In their spirit, there was a boldness factor. Do you remember the message of the boldness factor? Do you still remember? Oh my goodness, this church. Do you remember the series on the boldness factor? It is time to act out that boldness factor. So they had a language of warfare. And verse 19 says in chapter 4 there, But Peter and John answered them, whether is it right in the sight of God to listen to you rather than to do what God has called us to do? They said, you must judge whether we must listen to you as people or we must listen to God. For we cannot stop to speak what we have seen and what we have heard. Mm. It's time to develop a language of warfare. Wow. Can I hear Basarwadi saying, Viva! It's time to develop a language of warfare. Somebody say with me and speak like a soldier. Say with me, forward we go. Forward we go. Somebody say with me, I'm ready. I'm ready. Whatever it takes, I'm ready. Whatever it takes, Say I'm with ready. me, I will stand. I will stand. Having stood, I will still stand. I will stand. Somebody say with me, I will not quit along the way. 
not quit the long Someone way. say, I am unstoppable for Jesus. I am unstoppable for Someone Jesus. say, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I'm not ashamed of Come the on, gospel. church, I will fear no evil. I will fear no evil. Glory to Jesus. You see, we cannot speak. We cannot speak like children. But we must speak what we have heard. Amen. We must speak what we have seen. Until this far, we can all say, Ebenezer, the Lord has been with us. Hallelujah. Amen. We have been through the tough. We have been through it all. And the Lord is on our side. We don't just speak the joy language as Christians. We must not just speak the prosperity language. We must not just speak the healing language. But we must also speak the language of warfare. When the war starts, we stand, we don't bow, we don't buckle, we face the storm because we are the people of Jesus. We must be unstoppable for Jesus. The world is looking for answers. The world is looking for salvation. The world is looking for redemption. The world is looking for healing. Amen. And the church is the provider of those things. Wow. We must come forward boldly and preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's Hallelujah. give the Lord a big hand of praise. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Be unstoppable for Jesus. The generation of the disciples, the generation of the apostles took the baton and it has been coming through the years and today it is in your hands. Please look into your hands and with your spiritual eyes I want you to see the baton that has got the sweat of history. The blood of the apostles. Prayers that were prayed in prisons, in boats, in ships, in storms for the gospel to reach you. Now the question is, is it going to stop with your generation? Or are you going to stand up in the midst of the plagues of today? Corona or no corona, COVID or no COVID, we must pass the baton to the next generation. The gospel must continue to be preached. We must stand in the storm in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's bow our heads. Dear Lord Jesus, May we speak like Paul who says, I am a debtor to the Greeks, to the Jews, and to everybody else who does not know the love of God. Even in this difficult time that we are going through, Lord, help us not to drop the baton. Jesus. In the dispensations and times, you saw our generation. And I believe that you have sent enough grace, enough anointing, enough power for us to stand the test of this time and become overcomers. Now we pray the Holy Spirit to stir militancy in the hearts of the people of God seated here today. That come rain, come sunshine, come plague, come war, come persecution, come prisons, comes propagandas, we will stand for the gospel in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your presence. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for being with us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for giving us your authority. That we are strong in you, in your power, not in our might and power but in your might and power. Teach us, Lord, to stand. Teach us, Lord, to turn around when the enemy chases us. Teach us to turn around and face the enemy and say no more. No more in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Right now, Holy Spirit, Thank you, we pray that you heal 
There are people, Lord, that are reaching out this morning. They want to be healed. They want direction, Lord. And we pray, Holy Spirit, you have the power to lead. You have the power to heal right now. Thank you. Heal in the name of Jesus. Heal in the name of Jesus. Because it is your will to heal. Thank you, Jesus. It is your will. It's a devil's will to make sick. But it is your will to make, to make, to make healing, to give healing. Thank you, Lord, for healing that person right now. In our midst, Lord. Hmm. And right where they are in their homes. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. We thank you. Amen. Whilst our heads are bowed in this place, friend, we are preaching Jesus. Friend, we are bringing the man of Calvary to you. That name cannot be changed by anybody. It is the name that God has sent to the world to save the world. And we are saying to you, we are bearing the stripes of Jesus. We have been lampooned, we have been laughed at, we have been lambasted, we have been attacked. But we are not dismayed because we are bringing life to you. If you accept Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, something happens in heaven. The Bible says it's a great joy when one person turns from their wicked ways and he accepts Jesus. You may not have brought joy in this world. You may be somebody that people have been looking down upon. But let me tell you this. The day you say, Jesus, save my life. The myriads of angels in heaven. God the Father and the Son himself starts a party in heaven. And on that day and right now, if you accept him, the Bible says your name will be written in the Lamb's book of life. And God will impact you and give you eternal life that when you pass from this life there is life forevermore for you that's why jesus died because right now you are a prisoner of sin you're bound by a life you cannot run away from and the only key that can set you free is the name j-e-s-u-s -S. we want to pray with you right now if you say bishop pray with me i want to accept the lord jesus christ in my heart now Pray this prayer with us from the bottom of your heart. I prayed this prayer 40 years ago. I'm still living for the Lord today. You can do the same. Come follow me in this prayer and pray it from the bottom of your heart. We're just leading you in praying the correct way. Say, dear Lord Jesus. Dear Lord Jesus. Today. Today. I realize. I realize. I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner. That needs salvation. That needs salvation. I surrender to you. I surrender to you. Because you are the love of God. Because you are the love of God. You died for me. You died for you me. You shed your blood for my sins. You shed your blood for my sins. And you rose from the dead. And you rose from the dead. There's salvation in your name. There's salvation I in your name. I am accepting that salvation. I'm accepting that salvation. Forgive me all my sins, Lord. Forgive me all my sins. And from today. And from today. I'll serve you. I'll serve through you. the help of the Holy Spirit. The help of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Father, that prayer right now, prayed by your children, I pray that love, life, guidance shall be upon them from today. Every chain of Satan be broken from your hands, your feet, and your mind. And from today, you will walk in the love of the Lord. Amen. Now, if you pray that prayer with us, contact us here on Facebook, and we will continue to share the gospel with you. We have to baptize you as a sign of death to sin and resurrection in the new life. Contact us that we may baptize you and so that you can begin to serve the Lord. And the Lord greatly bless you. Amen. Come on church, let's put our hands together for the Lord. Hallelujah. And thank Hallelujah. you to our viewers. Thank you to our viewers. What? What? Thank you for watching us. And remember that the name of the Lord is a strong tower. A strong tower. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus.